Hello and welcome to Rhino's Orioles Report. Four game set in Cleveland is over. Orioles are coming, or they are back home. Be playing in a few hours. Four game series in Cleveland didn't go as well as we would have liked. They did split this, Orioles did split the series with the Guardians. I'm going to make sure I call them the Guardians, not the Indians. But they really could have won all four of those games. Bullpen gave it up late. <clears throat> As you can see, I am on MadisonSports.com. So, from Cleveland, Ohio, Baltimore Orioles, Cleveland Guardians. This is game one. Orioles two, Guardians five. Take a look at this eighth inning. You see in the top of the eighth inning, the Orioles scored two. And in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Guardians scored three. <clears throat> Henderson led off. 0 for 4, did walk once. Rutschman, 3 for 4, scored once. 3 for 4, though. Santander hitting right behind that, Mr. 3 for 4. 0 for 4. 1 RBI. O'Hearn, one for four, one RBI. Mullins, over. Hayes, over. Hicks, two for four. Sometimes during a season, you really just got to get lucky. Talked about Webb. Talked, haven't talked that much about Hicks. In the same light, but another guy claimed off waivers and you, the Orioles, were able to claim him when several other teams were in front of them. It's been very good for us. Probably a little more offensively than defensively, but I mean, here you go. Others not like Hayes, Mullins, Henderson, Frazier, Westberg, Arias, all not hitting. Aaron Hicks has two hits. As I said, Frazier, Ofer, Westberg ended up only getting two at bats. One walk, Ofer one. We assume that it is just that righty-lefty matchup kind of thing, because Kerstad, pinch hit, left-handed hitter, pinching, pitch hitting for a right-handed hitter, and was one for one. Arias then came in to pinch Ryan, pinch ran for Kerstad, and then went in to play third base with, Kirst, uh, with Westberg out of the game. Arias did get one at bat. He did not get a hit. He struck out, but he did score once. Rutschman, two doubles. O'Hearn, one double. Orioles were able to turn a double play behind Grayson Rodriguez. Not as good as an outing as, like, say, the last one, but he went five innings, gave up five hits, two runs, walked three, struck out seven. Don't really like the three walks, but not a great strike zone called. And Cleveland is a very pesky lineup. They foul off touch pitches. Tough, they foul off tough pitches, and they take pitches that are tough pitches to take because of their closeness to the strike zone. D.L. Hall came in in relief, pitched one and one-third of an inning. No hits, no runs, no walks. Struck out one. Jorge Lopez finished off, what would this have been, the seventh inning? It looks like, yeah, seventh inning. Did give up a hit, but no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. And then everything went to shit. C.N.L. Perez, in the eighth inning, does not get credit with an out. Gives up one hit, three runs, and walked one. He hit a batter. 
happens, I guess. Webb comes in to try to stop the bleeding. Does get two outs in the eighth. Does give up a hit and walk two. Webb doesn't get charged with the runs here because there were runners on. So they would be charged to Perez. Bauman trying to get the last out in the, in the eighth inning. And he does just that. One third of an inning pitched. I mean, you can look at all the pitchers over here for Cleveland. The Cleveland Guardians did not fare that much better on the pitching side. But they were just able to peck away at the Orioles. But in the midst of this huge stretch of no off days, the bullpen is hurting. At least at this point, they were hurting. It's not so much now. Things turned around later in the series. Game 2, Orioles 8, Guardians 9. Check the ninth inning out here. Orioles 2 in the top. And... Guardians 2 in the bottom. Henderson leading off 2 for 4. 1 RBI. Walked once. Scored 3 times. Rutschman 1 for 5. Scored once. Santander 3 for 4. With 3 RBI. Scored once. Ryan McKenna pinch running. And defense replacement. Did score once. Ryan O'Hearn 1 for 3. 2 walks. Scored once. Aaron Hicks played all three outfield positions this night, as there was lots of movement and Brandon Hyde trying to coach this like it's a National League game from like five years ago. But, hey man, it works. Hicks one for four, two RBIs, walked once. A is over three. Mullins, you can see, had the day off and was then pinch hit for Hayes late. Swapping in a lefty for a righty. Or swapping in a, yes, swapping in a lefty for a righty. Hayes 0 for 3, Mullins 0 for 2. Kerstad 0 for 3. Teo Pinch ran later in the game. Got on with a, it wasn't a walk, it was like a fielder's choice or something. Actually, it was probably an error. It's one of these errors over here. Westberg, 0 for 3. Struck out twice. Frazier, 0 for 1 in a pinch hitting appearance. Then going in for Westberg at second base. Arias actually played the whole game. Shocking. 2 for 4 with a run scored. That's probably why he played the whole game. Orioles struck out 9 times. It's not great. Hicks, Santander, Henderson, double, Arias, triple. No home runs. Hicks stole a base. Santander, that's right. Santander had a tough time in the outfield to start. He did end up making a good, nice diving catch, but he was having trouble finding his footing out there. Don't know if it was some of the wet weather, maybe, or the field being terrible, or maybe some other thing that caused him to not be able to stay on his feet. Kramer gets to start in this one. Three and one-third of an inning. Seven hits, six runs. Three of them earned. You can see Santander and Henderson both with errors there. Kramer walked two, struck out three. Not that good for him. But good news. T. Wells, that's right. Tyler Wells back up with the club. Probably not going to get any starts, at least in a regular season here. Probably. We'll have to see. It's possible he'll get one just to... Try to get back in the rhythm of being a starter, and maybe he'll start in a playoff game. Maybe it's possible. Went two innings. No hits, no runs, no walks. Struck out one. 
it's tough to say because it looked like all his pitches were there, but the reason really he went down was he was just, he, was, he had pitched a lot, a lot more than he had in his career. And he was getting at that point where his arm was, you know, he's just getting tired. But the problem is, still had like a month or two left in the season. So hopefully with some rest that he had in the minor leagues, he should be back to form. Fujinami pitches two-thirds of an inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Eh, it happens. Coulomb, and you can see all the names here. I mean, especially with a three-inning performance by Kramer. It's This is where the bullpen, it was, it was yeah, things were looking bleak. Coulomb pitches one-third of an inning. Gives a one-hit, one-run, one-walk. Does strike out a batter. Lopez pitches a full inning. One hit, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. D.L. Hall, two-thirds of an inning. Two hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Cano. Trying to save the game. Ends up pitching one-third of an inning. Gives up two hits, two runs. Walks one. They walked it off for him. So while, yes, these first two games weren't great, facing the Cleveland Guardians, they don't have a whole lot to play for except their own pride, which they played very hard considering they weren't, you know, in an, in the playoff really. So <clears throat> got to give them credit, but... Maybe if the Orioles bullpen wasn't as taxed, maybe if they had a day a day off in there somewhere, because what'd they have? One, two days off in September? It's pretty bad, but schedule makers kind of screw the Orioles over. Especially during this this stretch of the year. Happens, I guess. Finally things get turned around. Game three, Orioles two, Guardians one. Henderson one for four, scored a run, also walked once. Rutschman two for four, walked once. Santander three for five, two RBIs. Hayes defensive replacement late. See, Hayes got the day off. Which is another reason why the acquisition of Aaron Hicks was so huge. You can get Mullins and Hayes days off, and you're not losing a whole lot in defense if you're really losing anything at all. And you're getting a veteran hitter that has postseason experience. That's, I mean, that's not even measurable. That's that's not even a measurable st- statistic there. The amount of, not even playoff experience, but playoff push experience. Where was I at? Okay. O'Hearn, Ofer. Mullins, Ofer, did walk once. Hicks, Ofer 2, walked twice. Arias, 1 for 4. Fraser, 0 for 4. James McCann, 2 for 4, scored once. Santander, doubled once. The only extra base hit for the Orioles. Is what it is. O'Hearn Henderson stolen bases. Yes! Johnny Means! Well, he meaned business this night. Saturday night, he took and he. God, when did he lose the no hitter? He took a no hitter into the seventh inning, didn't he? What, what inning was it? Oh, there you go, right there. Thank you, Mr. Brian Duluk from the Associated Press. No hit bid into the seventh inning. Now we will. Okay, there you, well, thank you for loading. We'll see, cause the last time he had he went pitch that long. Pretty sure it was his no hitter, and he just wasn't necessarily right after that. So hopefully, 
There's no negative effects here. He only threw 96 pitches, so it's not like he got up over 100. He gave up that hit, which ended up being a solo home run. And that was pretty much it for him. Or no. Yeah, no. No, actually, eighth inning, actually. I think it might have been one. I'm not sure what happened when he got taken. What? It doesn't really even matter. <clears throat> he almost didn't want him to go that long. You like that. And I, I, I can't even remember what Brandon Hyde said. But I mean, if the bullpen was more rested, I don't even know if I want him pitching seven innings. Six innings, yes. More than that, I don't know because you're just coming back from Tommy John. Hopefully, he'll be fine his next start, which was probably going to be Thursday or Friday up in Boston, I think. John means seven and one-third inning pitch, one hit, one run, one walk, four strikeouts. Strikeout numbers are a little down. I mean, for seven innings, I think it would be up more like five or six. It's not a whole lot, but it's like one or two less strikeouts than we're probably used to seeing from John Means, but that's okay. Cano finishes out the eighth inning. Slightly odd that it was Cano to come in in the eighth inning. Got two outs there. No hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Perez ends up with the save. Because he was the one that got in the ninth inning. It's possible. I don't even remember. I probably should remember the lineup. But I'm almost pretty sure. One of the main reasons why was because, for the most part, Perez has pitched very, very good for the past two months. And I'm almost positive that um, there were more left-handed batters at least scheduled for the ninth inning about where the lineup was. There would be scheduled more lefties, but you don't know what Mr. Francona was going to do on the other side. Again, Perez gets a save, third save of the year, one inning pitch, no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Okay, but this is huge because the bullpen's getting back on track. Final game of this four-game set, Sunday's game, Yes, I had my two TVs set up watching the Orioles and the Ravens. This game went good. The other one didn't go that good. Orioles 5, Guardians 1. It was not that close of a game. Henderson led off 0 for 4 with a walk. Rutschman 2 for 3 with an RBI, 2 walks. Santander 0 for, but had a walk and an RBI. McKenna back up with... Back up with the club due to Ryan Mountcastle being on the injured list. Defense replacement late. O'Hearn 0 for 5. Don't say that for him too much. Only been like recently, really. Curse Dad started the game at DH. 0 for 1 with a walk. Scored a run. Aaron Hicks pinch hit late. Best guess, it's only because Karstad's a young left-handed hitter. have not heard any news that it's a potential injury for Karstad. I had I heard nothing about that. Hicks, one for two, with, one, with all, one walk, so technically three plate appearances, and he scored once. Hayes, 0 for three, did walk once. Mullins, one for three, with an RBI, walked once, scored once. Westberg, one for four with an RBI, scored once. Mateo, two for four with an RBI, also scored once. Good to see Mateo in there. <sighs> Odd to see Mateo being picked off, but it happens, I guess. Rutschman, two doubles. Mateo Westberg, also with doubles. 
back-to-back seven-inning outings from a starting pitcher. Well, you know what, Kyle Gibson, it is about time you show why you are a veteran player and why you have been on playoff teams for the past few years. Gibson goes seven innings with only five hits, one run, one walk, only struck out four, but not exactly a huge strikeout guy. Great performance. Yes, we the Orioles had an off day Monday, but with these back-to-back seven-inning performances by a starting pitcher, the bullpen should be rock-solid, ready to go down the stretch here. Six games remaining. At least we hope. Danny Coulomb, one full inning pitch, no hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. D.L. Hall finishes the game off here. Not a safe situation. One inning pitch, no hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. You really like seeing this. The, the Orioles are a very young team, but... Facing adversity like this, you can't. Your starters can't get out the fourth inning. Your bullpen's got to cover six, seven innings, or whatever a night. You're having trouble, and it's causing you to lose games. Well, what happens? You rally behind each other, and good starting pitching. It is something that you will need need in the postseason. All right, let's get to a few articles. I can't even remember what the hell they updated with this. Oh no, that's that's all it is there. Raku Botko, and this is from an article written today. Update on Batista. He threw 20. See it right here. Through a bullpen session this afternoon. Did have a hitter Standing around the plate. I don't exactly know where they have this hitter stand. I, I assume in the box, I guess. And he didn't strictly throw fastballs. Supposedly, this is a step in the right direction. I don't know. I mean, it really depends on the extent of his injury. Unless my memory is terrible, and it's absolutely possible. A partial tear in a UCL... Could it have healed enough for him to get through some innings in some capacity during the playoffs? It's sure, I guess. I mean, it's possible. Guess I don't necessarily, and I didn't like and subscribe in a bit. I have all these sticky notes that say like and subscribe, and I completely forgot to do it in the beginning. Wow. Oh my god. All right. What am I, Batista? Not having experience with this injury, I guess, would lead me to err on a side of caution. I don't know that I really want him throwing this much. It does seem like one wrong slip or move or hole in the mound somewhere from another pitcher could cause some kind of tweakage and maybe... Worse than the injury. What? I mean, they don't think so. That's okay. Hey, man, do your thing. You guys are no more about this than I do. I just hope that this doesn't worsen the injury and he's out longer. Which it may be possible that it, that that isn't even possible. Because what's the worst he could ha- that could happen is he fully tears his UCL. I guess what's worse is could happen. He could do it the first game of the series, and then you have to go that whole spot with. Of course, I don't even know what the rules are for that. I guess that is too much speculation for now. Take a look at this other article. Well, maybe some more speculation. This is also another article Rock Kubatka wrote today, and he mentioned that Kyle Bradish and Grayson Rodriguez will be getting the starts, scheduled anyway, in this two-game series with the Nationals. Now then, there's four games after that. So, is there potential for 
this to be lining up the way Brandon Hyde and the rest of the Orioles staff wants it to. Bradish and Rodriguez would then have several days, actually probably closer to a week off, if they are labeled as starter one and starter two. Potentially, very good candidates for your best and your second best starter. There really is potential here that this is Brandon Hyde trying to manipulate the rotation to be ready for playoff time. Though to a certain extent, I think, because what are there, there are two or three games played? Bef- well, I mean, it depends on when, you know, depends on when the Orioles would have to play. We don't know yet. This is set up for if somebody had to pitch the day after the season ends, Braddish should be able to go. So there's that. All right, enough speculation. Let's get in some more facts. Look at this. Six games left. The Orioles have a two and a half game lead in the American League East. Magic number is at three. That would be Oriole wins and or Ray losses. So, very critical time of the year. The Nationals, nobody's expecting anybody to roll over or anything, but the Orioles should not have trouble with the Nationals. They really shouldn't, especially not with Bradish and Rodriguez going. Boston Red Sox, a different story. But that will be, these last six games will be home games. So, While maybe we didn't have as much rest as we would have liked in September, we do play the last week of the season at home. You know, it's a trade-off there. Don't know if that's a good trade-off or not. Similar situation in the West. The Rangers have a a two-and-a-half game lead on the Astros with the Mariners four games back. Look to be... Between wild card at least is looking between the Astros, the Mariners, and the Rays at least for now. Again, seeding, we don't know yet. Well, Dodgers have clinched the NL West and the Braves have clinched the NL East. Don't know how many games these people have left, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, as I mentioned, six games left, two games left. I mean, two game series with the Nationals. Both of these games are scheduled for 635. These are from Camden Yards. And then Red Sox will come in for four games. Down to the wire here. Really need, you really want to get two wins here against the Nationals because then you only got to get one win against the Red Sox. So a couple, couple hours and we'll see how the Orioles play. Going to wrap it up for this edition of Rhino's Orioles Report. Be sure to like and subscribe. I am the Angry Rhino. This is Birdland.